Antifa to appear in the Charlottesville death trial to start today. Dwayne Dixon of Redneck Revolt slash Antifa to appear in the trial of James Fields. Antifa and Redneck Revolt guy Dwayne Dixon, not his real name, will apparently appear in the trial of James Alex Fields, allegedly the driver of that car that drove into those people outside the Unite the Right rally at Charlottesville, Virginia on August 12, 2017, is to stand trial today if the jury selection goes well. That's according to Rojas, November 29, 2018. Fields has been charged with first-degree murder of Heather Hayer. The driver, allegedly James Alex Fields, also injured many others, allegedly dozens of people. That's according to the Associated Press and the Cincinnati Inquirer. November 27, 2018, and Evans, November 29, 2018. Dwayne Dixon, who was a lecturer at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, might be a key witness for the defense, according to Evans, November 29th. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend that you scroll down to the description below and click on the link to my video called Who Does Antifa Actually Attack? Episode 7, in which I detail how Dwayne Dixon has claimed more than once that he waved his rifle at James Alex Fields, who was in his car, before he drove his car into those people. Also in that video, you can see Dwayne Dixon more or less order people with his rifle on that day to get into traffic and to get ready to get hit, to put their bodies on the line. For more on that, again, see the first link in the description below, and below that you will see links to all the sources that I use in this video. According to the Richmond Times Dispatch, quote, Fields attorneys have said the plan to call, I think they mean they plan to call, as a witness, Dwayne Dixon, a professor at the University of North Carolina and a member of the loose-knit left-leaning protest group, <laughs> protest group, more like terrorist group, Antifa, who claimed during a guest lecture at Harvard University October 2017 to have quote-unquote shooed Fields away with his rifle shortly before the crash. Despite the lack of evidence connecting this event to the car attack, some have taken this as proof Fields was fleeing when his vehicle struck the crowd, unquote. Sorry, no date is provided for this video, but it has to be before March 6, 2018. Let's have a look. So James Fields, driving his Charger, slow rolled our western perimeter, so that was 4th Street several times, one time he paused right in front of me and I waved him off with my rifle. At his last pass, he accelerated and a block away, he killed Heather. This video came from a post on Facebook by Traditional Western Man. The post provided a link to a full version of the video on YouTube, but not surprisingly, we could see when we click the link that it says, this video is no longer available because the YouTube account associated with this video has been terminated. This is hardly surprising, folks. This stuff happens all the time. That's why we have two out of three strikes. Expect our channel to go away any freaking day now. So subscribe to us on BitChute. Moving on. Now, of course, this wouldn't be proof of anything other than the fact that Dwayne Dixon claims that he waved his gun at the guy and then the guy drove off and etc. The trial was scheduled to start yesterday, Wednesday, November 28, 2018, but quote, Judge Moore said the trial will likely begin Thursday morning, unquote. That's according to Rojas, November 29th. The same source also reports that quote, opening remarks are not expected to start until Thursday at the earliest, unquote. They mean November 29th, and quote, in a trial hearing earlier this year, Fields told a judge that he is being treated for bipolar disorder, anxiety, Anxiety, depression, and ADHD. A Charlottesville police officer earlier this year testified that as he was being detained after the car crash, Fields said he was sorry and sobbed when he was told a woman had been killed. Now, I want to point out here, this may all well be true, but note that he, James Alex Fields, is a member of Vanguard America, and, well, they're the people who openly display, you know, neo-Nazi symbols. I don't really know too much about Vanguard America, but it's not that James Alex Fields was some guy that was just happened to be there driving around. He was attending the rally as part of the, you know, the shield wielding guys and all that kind of stuff. However, that does not mean that he did it on purpose. And it doesn't mean that he didn't do it on purpose. It's funny because whenever this t uh, subject comes up on social media, no matter what I say, if I just point out certain facts that have been reported, people freak out and go, oh my god, you're on the Nazi side, or oh my god, you're on Antifa side, whatever the case may be. Moving on. Now, the same source reports, quote, defense attorney John Hill again told potential jurors that they may hear a theory that Fields was acting in self-defense, unquote, and, quote, Hill also noted that there will be testimony regarding Fields' mental health, unquote, and the same source reports that defense attorney John Hill, quote, noted that there will be testimony regarding Fields' mental health, unquote. NPR reports, quote, Fields could face life in prison for Heather Hare's death if the jury finds his actions were premeditated. 
He's also charged with eight counts of malicious wounding and one count of hit and run. About 30 people were injured. The defense also indicates that there may be testimony concerning Fields' mental health. Attorneys listed as potential witnesses, experts from the University of Virginia's Institute of Law, Psychiatry, and Public Policy. According to the Associated Press and the Cincinnati Inquirer, quote, on Monday, Fields' attorney John Hill told a group of prospective jurors that the jury will hear evidence that Fields, quote, thought he was acting in self-defense, unquote, unquote. Again, all these sources are in the description below, and I'll actually put a lot more sources than I'm using in this video because I want to get this video out quick and I don't want to be too redundant and just, you know, do my usual thing where I get exhaustive. So there you go, folks. You can see a lot more again. If you scroll down, click on the links below and click on the first link to see more about Dwayne Dixon, you know, bragging about or admitting or whatever that he uh, waved his rifle at James Alex Fields before he drove his car into those people. Well, hold on, folks. There is an update as of 3.15 p.m. today, November 29th. This is from the NPR article, and it says, Opening statements in the trial began Thursday morning. That would be the 29th morning after 16 jurors were sworn in. The prosecution called on jurors to pay close attention to Fields' actions in the days and hours leading up to the August 12, 2017 crash. Prosecuting attorney Nina Alice Anthony painted a picture of a man intent on using his car as a weapon to injure or kill protesters. Quote, there's no dispute about what happened, unquote, Anthony said. Anthony said the prosecution doesn't expect the defense to contest the evidence that Fields slammed his car into the group. And that does match what we read earlier from those other sources. It seems like they're not contesting that he drove his car into the group, just that the, well, they're contesting the intent. Continuing with the article, quote, the case isn't about what he did, unquote, she said. Quote, it's about what his intent was when he did it, unquote. The defense countered in opening statements that Fields fully intended to come back to his hometown in Ohio after the rally. So in other words, they're trying to say no, his intent was not to do that because he didn't plan on going to jail that day, etc. Continuing, they said, he traveled overnight to Charlottesville with only a toothbrush and a change of clothes, no hotel reservations, helmet, face guard, stick, bat, or flag, which other protesters carried throughout the rally. Now, it's funny because the prosecution could say, yeah, he didn't get a hotel reservation because he didn't expect to... You know, he expected to do what he did and then go to jail. Who knows? You know, this is, and you notice that though on his shield, though he has it upside down, is the symbol of the Fasces, you know, the bundles of sticks with the axe head that's supposed to represent the uh, Roman Empire, the power of the Roman Empire. You know, as I learned in Latin class, each stick is like a little province, but together they're all really powerful as the Empire of Rome. But also keep in mind that you do see the symbol in, you know, in, I think, Congress, I believe it is, on the wall. And also, as uh, Tabby and I pointed out, you know, you, you could see it on government buildings. It's in, uh, you know, it's on the courthouse or whatever of our, or uh, some government building uh, in our own hometown here in West Virginia. You know, a lot of Roman symbols are used by a lot of different kind of competing political things. I mean, keep in mind, the Roman eagle kind of made its way into both Nazi iconography and also the American iconography, many other countries as well. Anyway, continuing the article. The prosecution's first witness was Michael Webster, a Charlottesville resident who said he was not involved in the rally. Webster described seeing Fields Dodge Challenger moving at a coasting speed down toward the crowd of protesters and then backing up slowly. He said as they walked uphill away from the crowd, his girlfriend audibly gasped as the, en the Challenger's engine revved. So apparently he went downhill slowly then stopped, then backed up, and then revved and went forward, I guess. At least according to Webster here. Quote, because of the world we live in, my first thought was, oh my God, he's driving into the crowd. Unquote, Webster told the jury. Webster testified that he and his girlfriend were the closest to the Challenger before it accelerated back down the hill toward the crowd. By the way, I noticed that in this video, you could see at first his brake light is on, and then it's off as he goes down the hill, for whatever that's worth. Continuing the article, it says, Marcus Martin, a friend of Hayer's, you know, Heather Hayer, the person who allegedly was killed by that crash, who was injured during the crash, that's Marcus was injured, also took the stand. He choked back tears as he described the moments before Fields' car sent him flying into the air, his red and white sneakers flailing in a well-circulated photo from that day. Quote, only thing I could think about is to get my wife out of the way, unquote, he said. Quote, I pushed her. That's when I got hit, unquote. Well, folks, what do you think about all this? Leave us a comment below and thank you for watching. Give me liberty or give me death.